campers, and welcome to Camp Sherwood. Today, we're going to be doing a lot of arts and crafts and activities, but most importantly, we're going to be analyzing a film. Yes, campers, that's right. Ever since the apocalypse, we've all had to do our camp at home, and our camp activities are no longer biking and running. That's right, they're watching movies. Welcome to fucking camp. So as I said, we're going to be watching movies and we really want to dissuade people from ever going to camp ever again, you know, to keep them away from the virus. So we have chosen a lineup of movies that are just perfect for dissuading one from going to camp. And luckily there are so many of those. There are a ton of movies about people going to camp and then being killed at camp. And like nobody goes to camp anymore. So now everybody's just like, what? What is that? What do you mean? Camp. That's very strange. <laughs> Sleepaway Camp is a wonderful movie that's probably horribly fucking transphobic. God, she's a boy. Okay, take this away from me now. Okay. Yeah. I no longer require music oh. for my teachings. Oh, okay. So there's kind of a weird phenomenon in movies, I guess, where one <laughs> can interpret a movie completely different based on their life experience. Like for instance, when I was in college, I had a professor that was like, yeah, I used to love Eraserhead. It was like my favorite horror movie. I loved it so much. It was so great. And then I had a baby and now I can't fucking watch it because it triggers the shit out of me and upsets me. Then it started to take on this like whole other different kind of meaning. It's funny how movies can do that, how art can do that. And with that in mind, I'd like to talk about a movie that exists in this very strange limbo where it might be perfect. She's so small. What do you know? Or it might be trash. They are too young to even understand what's on your mind. Then, good buddy. There ain't no such thing as being too young. To be honest with you, I have no idea, but I'm going to lean towards that it's awesome and you're gonna love it. What's she? Special? It doesn't seem fair, does it? <laughs> So for the uninitiated, Sleepaway Camp is a movie from the olden days, the before times. We were different back then. And it's a horror movie, it's a slasher, where uh, there's surprisingly justified kills in the movie. Uh, everyone is incredibly on the nose and dumb and also a queen slash himbo. How come you never take showers when the rest of us do? Like, pretty much everybody is either stupid in a cute way or stupid in an evil way, and it's wonderful. You bastard, I hate you! Except for one character, one character named Angela. Listen, Angela, let's say, uh, me and you go for a little walk somewhere. What are we talk about tonight, huh? Angela is a very quiet child that everybody would assume would be like, you know, weird or there's something wrong with her because she doesn't talk to people. I guess nobody stopped to think maybe she didn't want to talk to fucking anybody. I don't know. Anyway, so she's really awkward. She doesn't talk to a lot of people and uh, she might be a serial murderer. What do you want? Well? That's a spoiler, I guess, but then again, like the only thing that anybody ever talks about with Sleepaway Camp is like the last three seconds of the movie when it is revealed <laughs> that Angela is actually a transgender woman. God, she's a boy. 
And now they don't necessarily go about it like that. They go about it in a way that's maybe a little less subtle, a little less nice, maybe a little before timesy. We don't talk like that no more. It's 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 kind of a it's maybe a bad yeah. Why, I believe it means angel. Why, yes, I'm sure it does. I know you're going to like that name. Won't you, Peter? I mean, if you're reading it one particular way, yes, definitely, it's bad. I have every suspicion in the world that this movie was intended to be hideously transphobic. Like, that was the punchline of the movie, was like, uh, yeah, you thought, but no, actually. But the weird thing is, upon re-watching it, you realize that Angela is surprisingly justified in all the kills that she does, and also the fact that she is transgender doesn't have an awful lot to do with, like, the horror. There's, there's no fear of the possible penis that lie beneath. Mostly, you know, people are are worried that she's going to stab him. What do you say we get that beautiful bot of yours into the water? What I'm saying is, it feels like that decision was maybe made just to shock people. You know, no, they didn't know about trans people, and oh, now they do. In the best possible way. I feel like everybody who interprets this movie to be a hideously transphobic nightmare about a transgender murderer uh, who, who isn't that scary. She has a penis. However, last year we hung the girl's panties on the flagpole. Sorry. It takes a different sort of turn when you are actually a transgender like myself. Hi, boys. Things change after you, uh, do the whole transition thing for a couple of years. You look at movies and you see them completely different and, uh, people's behavior, you know, you read it completely different. There's so many things that are different, but we kind of got all this stuff that we didn't realize that we had. We have a movie called Sleepaway Camp that on one hand is like, ha ha ha, trannies. But on another side, it's like, but she fucking is a queen though. I just wasn't ready. I just- Hey, I understand. Please don't. What about the fact that she's a queen? Divorce. Judge, I'm sorry, I have to like it. She's a queen. I can't help it, she's a queen. Ladies and gentlemen, and those that are not, we have a queen. Uh, Burt Reynolds. We're getting warmer. I give up. Surprise. Who are you? So Angela just happens to be the sassiest bitch. Like she doesn't talk to anybody. She has like guys simping around for her. Like a lot of guys are into her like as a curiosity, which is accurate to how trans women are often treated. Like a white pony. I think that is not the euphemism. I, I think white <laughs> pony means cocaine. And I don't think that Angela and cocaine have much to do with each other. No, and trans women are made of cocaine. And then of course the women hate her because she's invading their spaces. And the men hate her because she's different and maybe gay. Everybody hates Angela for literally no reason. All she did was show up. She hasn't said a word. She hasn't done a thing. She's just there and everybody's very upset about that. And then over the course of the film, she gets wronged in many hideous ways. And because of this, decides to go on a murderous rampage. <laughs> Like, I would do the same thing if someone tried to do a pedophilia to me. Hey, look at all that young, fresh chicken. Where I come from, we call them baldies. The first kill is just a creepy guy who's trying to creep on her and like, if you've ever seen the movie before and you know that the twist is that she's transgender, you're watching the scene, like, biting your nails for the possibility that this nightmare pedophile person is going to find out that she's transgender and then kill her. All bummers! No problem. We'll find something she likes. I bet we can find something interesting in the walk-in. You never know what you can find in there. Anyway, so she fucking kills him. <laughs> She turns him into beef jerky by way of water. I assume he probably does die. I mean, he, his character dies in the sense that he's no longer seen on screen again, which thank God. Who's next? Who does she kill next? Gillian Maxwell? Oh, how horrible.
throughout the movie, her kills kind of uh, maybe unintentionally become symbolic for a lot of the experiences of transgender people and like the, the people that they find the most frustrating, which is like people that want to sexualize them just bluntly, men who just want to have sex with them, women who are like really turfy. You might recognize a one JK rolling. Harry, no. <laughs> And then uh, she also murders a pile of children who are very cruel. Children are very cruel to trans people and sometimes... Come on, we've all been there, sister. You know, there's like that little kid who's like, what's wrong with him? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> you fucking little bastard. You guys are really pains in my ass, you know that? Anyway, so Angela fucking kills a bunch of children, but they deserved it. And then at the end of the film, she murders the boy that was trying to have sex with her all the time and she didn't want to have sex with him. She just kills him too. I hope you're not mad I did that. I'm not mad. I better go in. Can I have another one? You know another goodnight kiss? Which, good, he broke her fucking heart. So I find it ironic that a movie that was probably made for like transphobic reasons, perhaps, is surprisingly vindicating to the trans community. Like it actually represents a lot of the things that we experience and the ways that we interact with other people and how that can often be very frustrating or at least like very distancing and also how the reveal that someone is transgender somehow it turns them into a monster in the eyes of many people. But I like Angela's style, you know, she's very punk rock. It just is accidentally the most punk rock transgender movie in the world because she just fucking murders them and you're like, wow, cool. So it just so happens to have this kind of weird place in both horror cinema and queer cinema. In horror cinema, the intentionality of it is that you're supposed to be afraid of the slasher who, ooh, scary slasher murder, like Michael Myers or something like that. But you know, it's just a trans woman. But in queer cinema, it's like, watch as this trans woman just fucking goes around killing every single person that wrongs her at this whole fucking part. And it's funny how a movie can mean one thing to one community and something to a, another one. The purposes can be for completely different reasons. Even though maybe that thing was intended to like do something derogatory, it can still come around to being something that vindicates our experience. Yeah. She takes showers when no one can see. She has no hair down below. Judy, she's a real carpenter's dream. The lad is a board and needs a screw. <laughs> So, in conclusion, although this movie does feature a trans woman being played by a cis woman, and because this movie was perhaps made for transphobic reasons, it happens to be uh, the coolest fucking horror movie slasher with a slasher that you can actually get behind. You're like, hell yeah, Angela, I support you 1000%. Go out there and make them love you or else. <laughs> It's good shit. It's good shit and it's a movie that is way outdated but has come to mean something completely different to people nowadays than it did at the time. I wonder like if this movie even has really a place in queer cinema. It just so happens to contain all of these important things while failing at its ultimate goal of making me feel intimidated by this. This is what it must feel like if you're like a white guy and you watch Fight Club. <laughs> So, Sleepaway Camp, you should go out and give it another shot, if, especially if you're gay, because the gays will really love it. And if you're not gay, maybe you like it too. I, I don't know. Maybe you're into trans women who kill. Then you're gonna love me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the end of the video. Today, this video was sponsored by nobody because I don't have sponsors. That's, that's, I don't. Nobody would ever sponsor my videos, that would be silly. 
it's time to subscribe to the Nick Spears YouTube channel if you have not yet already. It's a good idea for everyone to try, just like acid. And if you're like me, then you love to throw money at random people that you discovered on the internet. So, check out my Patreon. <laughs> But then he is such a dear, I'm sure that he won't mind. You see, I've always wanted a little girl. But of course, when my husband left... Oh, well, that's all water under the bridge, as I always say. Water under the bridge. 